hey guys welcome back to the channel um today i want to talk about ants not only ants but why ants are not a good sign in the garden okay i was out here the other day and i noticed a lot of ants around my squash plants not only my squash but a couple around my watermelon plants as well so i'm going to show you what i'm talking about and i don't know because i came out and sprayed after i saw that with my neem oil but then we got two days of rain so i'm going to show you what i'm talking about Okay, there's an ant there. And I seen a couple of other ones around here. There's one over there. Okay. Now, whenever you see ants around your plants, it's not a good sign because ants will bring aphids to your plants okay so then what you got to do is you have to check the undersides of your leaves see that right there those are signs of aphids those are aphids i think those ones might be actually dead those are the ones i sprayed so those ones are not alive but you see the ants are not gone so just because those aphids are dead doesn't mean the ants are going to stop okay S aphids are sap sucking pests and if you don't nip the ant issue in the bud they will bring the aphids okay they come in four colors they come in green yellow red and black okay and like i said they're on the undersides of the leaves and if you see ants there's usually an aphid issue so what ants do is they mine aphids which means they go into the soil they get the aphids, they bring the aphids up to your leaves and they leave them there, okay? The idea is they want the aphids to work on your leaves. They, the aphids are gonna suck the sugars out of your leaves and then what they do is they excrete a excretion called honeydew. That's what the ants want. So they're gonna bring those aphids up to your leaves. They want them to start sucking. They want them to excrete that honeydew. They come, they get the honeydew, and then they take it back to their colony, okay? So you can treat the aphids with neem oil, but that's only going to treat the aphids that are on the plant. You need to get rid of the ants. If you get rid of the ants, you get rid of the aphids. Okay, so I want to show you how to um, organically and naturally get rid of the ants, okay? You can try to find, first of all, where the colony is, okay? But I've, I've sat here for a minute or two and I've tried to figure out where the colony is, but I, can't, I, don't, I don't know where it is, okay? That's where cinnamon would come in. If you can find out where the colony is, where the ant hill is, if you can find that, you can treat the ant hill with cinnamon. If you pour a really good amount of cinnamon on that hill in that hole, that is gonna, they're gonna leave. They're not gonna wanna be there. They're gonna leave, they're gonna move, they're gonna relocate. Okay, so if you can find the hole, the ant colony, then that would be great. Um, Another way you could do is you could flood the hole. If you flood it, then their tunnels are messed up. They, they can't breathe. They can't 
you know, function. So they'll have to find another, they'll move, they'll leave that spot. So that's two ways to make them leave if you can find the colony. Now, if you can't find the colony, which is I can't find the colony, I looked and um, it's probably somewhere under all these wood chips because I just laid down all this mulch and cardboard and wood chips um, and that's when I just that's when I discovered I had the ant issue so um, like look at this one here I don't know if he's he's getting this honeydew looks like he's getting honeydew off of the leaf that the aphids may have left behind see there's an aphid right there in front of him I don't know if you can see that it's so tiny but there's one right in front of him So anyway, I need to get rid of the ants. So what I did was I got some ingredients. They are um, natural, organic ingredients, and I'm gonna make some traps. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some traps. The ants are going to be attracted to those traps. They're gonna go in there, they're gonna get what's in there because it's mainly sugar and they're gonna take it back to the colony where they can feed it to the rest and that'll destroy the colony right there. So, um, I am gonna spray for the, for, the, for the aphids that I already have on here. Let's see if you can see these. See those black spots in there? Those are aphids. Now it's not terribly bad yet, but if I let it get out of control, it'll be a disaster. So I made some traps with the borax, the sugar, and some water. And now I made it into like a paste, like a dry paste, because I don't want it to be too liquidy. I need them to be able to carry it back to the colony. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is the borax. What we're gonna do is gonna get borax, sugar, water, empty plastic bottle, scissors, and a tablespoon. Go ahead and measure out three tablespoons of borax. Put that in a bowl, a dish, a plastic container, anything you got. Then we're gonna get some water, one and a half tablespoons of water. And we're gonna mix in some sugar. All I had on hand was stevia. So that's what I'm using. Hopefully that works for me or works just as good. And we're gonna do three tablespoons of that not with the same measuring spoon though you don't want to put your borax spoon in your sugar mix that well so you're going to do equal parts borax equal parts sugar and then half of the amount of water you should have a thick paste consistency we want the ants to be able to carry this back to their colony get your plastic bottle any type of plastic bottle will do. I chose these little ones because they'll fit in my containers nicely. Just make some really small slits, just holes big enough, not too big. There you go. Just big enough for the ants to get in and out of. All right, now you're gonna spoon the mixture in the bottle and make sure that your hole is on the top. Tap it a little bit so it's evenly distributed on the bottom. And what that's gonna do is the mixture being on the bottom keeps the bottle balanced with the hole on top. And if you get anything around the sides, just wash the outer caps Rinse away that residue 
so you don't have that seeping into your plants. And that's it. That's what you do to make your traps. Traps that I've made with the holes on top big enough for the ants to get in and out. I want the solution on the bottom so that I can weight it. I want this hole to stay on top. I don't want the solution to get in with my plants. I want the ants to get in here and get out and take it back to the colony. So I got three traps here. One's for the watermelon, one's for the zucchini, and one's for the squash. I haven't noticed anything on the cucumbers, so I'm hoping I can get rid of it before they make their way that way. So let's put these out. Okay, so I have one of my traps right in here. See, my hole is on top. Let me get this weed out of the way. My hole is on top. My solution on the bottom, weighted on the bottom. So hopefully we can attract some ants to there. Here's my second one. Now this is borax, okay? This is a laundry solution. Um, it's not boric acid. It's two different things, okay? Don't confuse the two, okay? Mix that with some sugar, a little bit of water, just enough to make a paste so that the ants, see that guy in there? I don't know if we can see him. He's in there already. Yep. Now they'll get that, they'll get that and take it back. If they can get out anyway. If they do make it out, they'll take it back to the hive or whatever colony. But if they don't, then they don't. So we're gonna hope, I hope these will work. Now I'm gonna take this other one over here to the watermelon. And I really don't want my watermelons to suffer this. Oh, look at that little pollinator there. Tiny little bee. That's a tiny, tiny little bee. I'm not seeing the ants right now, but I did see them out here yesterday and the day before. And I was out here. Oh yes, there they are, look at them. There's one right there. So I'm gonna slide this. Yep, I see them. I'm gonna slide this in here. Hopefully they'll get more attracted to this solution than my plants. I'm hoping I don't see any right now. I'm hoping I'm not too late. But um, later this evening, when my pollinators have all gone in, I will probably come out and maybe spray some neem oil again. But the watermelons are doing great, and I'm just weaving them in and out and through this trellis here, and it's working just great. It's working just fine. Getting nice and tall. Yep. This is kind of like a Florida weave type of trellising. So that's what we got going on. Trying to get ahead of this aphid issue. But everything else looks pretty good. Those are my moon and stars watermelon. So they've sprouted. I think I already came through here and showed you guys. Look at all the flowers on my cucumbers. 
Isn't that amazing? I love to see all these flowers. However, I don't see any females just yet. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. And I'll probably pluck off some of these males. The ones that are closed, I'll pluck those off. Now what that's going to do is that's going to encourage the plant to start producing some females because it needs to reproduce. Look at this guy here. Oh, yeah, see, I definitely need to get out here with some neem oil and get these suckers under control. I would be very sad if I was to lose any of my plants to aphids. This is my... Oh, I didn't come out here with the extra twine. This guy's getting away here. I need to tie him up. But yeah, everything else looks like it's doing really good. Everything seems to be grabbing hold and trellising and vining and climbing. This one here. Oh, they're kind of grabbing each other over here. But yeah, uh, that's my ant situation. So come back out with my neem oil solution and spray again. Okra has a true leaf on it. Red burgundy okra is doing good. Peppers are doing good. Beans are coming out. Those are the pole beans. Patty pan squash looks good. Oh, we've got that one in the back that just sprouted. That's great. <clears throat> Beets are coming up pretty nicely. Those straight eights look amazing back there. They are taking off now. I got that um, closet shelf in there because my daughter is redoing her closet. So I did that back there with the watermelon. I got that closet shelf there, and then I got this one here for the uh, truck for the tendrils to grab onto. But uh, yeah, so that's what I'm dealing with now. I'm dealing with this ant situation and this aphid situation. But other than that, everything else looks to be pretty good, and I am getting beans on my bush beans. Yay. Look at all the flowers I got on these plants. Now I came out and I hand pollinated this one and that one. So I'm hoping I got it in time and it'll produce. Yep. But everything looks pretty good. Pretty soon I'll have beans to harvest. This one down here is looking so good. This squash, this little experiment that I had, it's really looking healthy. All it is is this peat pot inside some dirt inside this cinder block, and that's it. But it really looks like it's uh, doing fine. Same with these ones. These are just in small little peat pots and buried in some dirt. And they are also just looking fine. Now I'm I'm accustomed to putting squash and zucchini in big containers, but we'll see. Maybe those little three, four little plants will produce. They seem to be getting flowers and such, so I guess we'll only find out. Now I'm hoping I'm hoping these ant traps are going to do me some justice. So I'll let you guys know. I will keep you guys updated. Please like and subscribe so you can get more videos. All right, guys, so like I said, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. 
And until next time, the more you know, the more you grow. Bye, guys.